Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts. Just want to share this with you. RFA, a little less than 24 hours ago, sent me an amazing piece of footage that covered the recent anomaly that they suffered at Saxavord in great detail. I have never seen this kind of transparency from any company, including SpaceX. This kind of really in-depth analysis of what they think went wrong with this particular anomaly so soon after the event. I have to admit, this makes this company stand apart in my opinion, and it's something that we should definitely appreciate. So instead of explaining it to you, I'm going to let RFA handle it all for you. So check it out. The plan for Monday was to hot fire the stage with all nine engines for the first time. We would ignite the center engine and then pairs of two engines with a small delay. We have gone through the entire filling process. We have gone through the chill down process and we have pressed the vehicle. And the plan was to run um, this test for a total duration of 35 seconds until um, propellant depletion. That has worked fairly well. We actually ignited eight motors. Unfortunately, one of these motors has developed an anomaly. We know now from the debris analysis that we have conducted in the last days that this anomaly was a very unusual one. It was most likely a fire in the um, oxygen pump. That's really difficult to contain. Um, this damage has spread onto neighboring engines. And when the stage introduced the emergency stop procedure, it appears that everything that followed thereafter was simply not sized for this extensive damage from this oxygen fire in the turbo pump. The fact that there was a fire jet coming out on the side of the vehicle is indicative that the engines that were compromised have damaged the propellant manifolding to such a great extent that we're actually pushing kerosene out of those vent lines. And that is really the point of no return. The engine um, propellant manifold system was damaged to such a great extent that kerosene kept fueling the fire. The fire got more and more intense. We know from the debris analysis that the fire actually turned into an oxygen fire at a later point in time because large portions of engines were simply combusted. They are no longer there. And um, that has unfortunately compromised the entire thrust frame structure of the stage. And um, unfortunately, the entire stage collapsed um, from that uh, result. The fire suppression systems, first the CO2 fire suppression system, then the water um, fire suppression system were simply not adequately sized to deal with this kind of damage. Unfortunately, this has happened in that very important stage test. And unfortunately, this has taken out the entire stage. This comes at a really critical time. We want it to launch within the next few weeks and months. And this is unfortunately no longer possible. We have inspected the damage on the site and we have realized a few things. First, when the stage collapsed, it actually collapsed in the right direction, meaning that it did not collapse on the umbilical tower and it did not collapse into the direction where it would have caused major damage on the launch site infrastructure. The launch site infrastructure is fine. There is basically no damage on the launch site systems except the direct supporting systems of the stage that are integrated on the launch stool that are basically sitting right around um, the um, engines. Those systems were compromised. We have to rebuild them, but there is no major elements of the launch site infrastructure that, we, that have to be rebuilt. We have ignited these helix motors more than 100 times, and we have never seen an oxygen fire in one of the turbo pumps. This is the very first time, and we are quite confident that uh, this is not related to the design. We are quite confident that the design is very sound and we don't have to make any changes there. We have a lot of improvements for both the launch stool and the vehicle. It's important to note that this was the very first first stage that we ever built. It was basically the engineering model. 
we have the second first stage in the workshop downstairs and there are more than 100 improvement um, tickets on that second build. The stage that we're building now was originally meant for flight two. We will now um, build it and construct it for flight one and it will have many improvements. The improvements mostly are related to propellant manifolding, to um, pressurization system manifolding, and the improvements will help us to sustain a major engine damage in flight and on the pad without basically losing the stage. The launch tool improvements will relate to the fire suppression systems mostly. We want to make sure that if we have such a severe engine failure where a turbo pump basically explodes, we will not lose stages in the future. It's important to note that the second stage, the third stage and the fairing are all ready for flight in Saxaford. They are there in our integration hangar waiting for the integration activities. The most important task for us to become a real launcher company is obviously injecting payload into orbit. If you have not injected payload into orbit, you're not a real launcher company. We will attempt that as quickly as possible. We will have to rebuild engines. We have to rebuild the stage, but we will be back on the pad relatively quickly. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you for all the message and thank you for all the wishes that we have received. Enjoy the footage. It is very spectacular and it has cost us quite some money to generate. Um, we will be back on the pad shortly and we will come back with a stage that is better than what we have had there previously.